Hello, I would like to talk to you today about worry, stress, panic, anxiety, overthinking. What do all these things have in common? One, they're not any damn fun. And two, they're all connected to each other. And three, they all release a hormone called cortisol. Not a doctor, I don't know if I said that right. And that is cupcake. My grandma's chihuahua. Okay, Cupcake. We hear you. About three months ago, I had so much cortisol in my system, I thought I was going to die. Uh, what started out was, um, you know, the usual. I had heart palpitations. We all know they come with anxiety and uh, panic attacks. And um, I was making it worse. I was feeling my pulse and I am not exaggerating when I tell you this. I was wearing a Holter monitor when I had these palpitations for about a month and um, I was feeling a palpitation once every 20 beats. I was easily having a thousand palpitations a day. Okay? And just going like this and feeling them come on gave me made me worry more and more and what happens when you worry you release cortisol which is your body's natural response to get you prepared for to run away or fight something uh, because your body thinks you're in danger and what happened well while I was having a thousand palpitations a day I remember I was laying on the couch playing a video game and the Holter monitor caught this on the device. I was playing my video game. The left side of my chest started to hurt. I stood up really fast and I was so dizzy I thought I was going to fall over. And, you know, I've had a lot of panic attacks in my life, but this one seemed different. So I got on the phone and I actually called the paramedics and I was like bang I opened the door I was banging on the neighbor's door across the way nobody answered the door and uh, you know um, my heart was just racing I could feel it I, I thought I was having a heart attack or I was gonna die um, and paramedics showed up you know they said well you know there's nothing wrong with your heart, you know, they hooked up the EKG or whatever to me. And um, I was like, well, I guess I was having a panic attack. But, I mean, honestly, in that moment, I thought I was dying. This seems so different. And, you know, I've made another video on, um, you know, panic attacks and anxiety. And, you know, the more you pay attention to your symptoms, it's like throwing gasoline on a fire. That's the way I look at it. And then... Before you know it, that fire is out of control and it just overtakes everything and you can't stop it. That's what a panic attack is. Um, but, you know, it's kind of hard. <laughs> it's really hard not to pay attention to your heart palpitations when you're having them because, damn, they, like, shake your entire body and you can feel them without even going like this. You know what I mean? Um... <sighs> Man, I was a big freaking mess three months ago. Uh, if it weren't for my dad, I don't know where I would be right now. He, I was driving down the road. I had another panic attack. While I was wearing that Holter monitor, I had three panic attacks that I thought I was going to die every time. Every time I went to the hospital, they said that I had a uh, sinus arrhythmia. Every ER told me that. I went to like three different ERs. And... Then my cardiologist told me that, you know, um, I was having so many palpitations, she didn't even want to tell me how many I was having. <laughs> so that should tell you right there, I had a sh shit ton of palpitations, okay? And when I say at, le at least a thousand a day, I am not exaggerating, one bit. So she said I had three episodes of some rare heart condition called uh, atrial tachycardia. So I looked into it, and uh, it doesn't look like it's something fun to have. And um, I asked her, what times did these happen? 
And the time I thought I was having a heart attack late at night where I called the paramedics, it was like 11 o'clock at night. And she said that my heart went from 89 beats per minute to 160. Just like that, for 18 seconds. And I said, well, I had a panic attack during that time. And then she said, another time in the afternoon when I was coming home from work, I called my dad and he actually picked me up and took me to the ER. And um, that was another time. So panic attacks can mimic heart arrhythmias or heart disorders. They can. And I found that out because I had three different cardiologists look at my echo. And they couldn't figure out. One of them said it was supraventricular tachycardia. One of them said it was sinus, arrhythmia, uh, sinus arrhythmia. And the other one said it was atrial tachycardia. So, I mean, <laughs> as if I didn't have enough chance to, or enough reason to worry, okay? I... You know, I was in a big pile of shit, okay? Not only was my palpitations out of control, my anxiety was out of control. Um, it was just a big pile of crap. And all it did was just release more and more cortisol and make me worry and overthink and stress about this shit. And when you... Let me tell you something, when we worry and overthink about things, you know, we always imagine the worst case scenario happening. And when we do that, we're just stressing ourselves out for no reason. Because 95% of the time, that worst case scenario that we come up with in our head doesn't even happen. And if you overthink and you stress and worry about stuff, you know what I'm talking about. You know I'm right. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm here to tell you today, I'm not a doctor, but I have had PTSD for nine years. And I have had plenty of panic attacks and anxiety attacks to tell you that when I was you know, in the worst anxiety state of my life, the only thing that saved me was exercise. And I know you're thinking to yourself, oh man, I can't exercise, that just makes my heart beat faster, or my heart palpitate. Guess what? I thought I was going to die. I thought I had nothing left to lose. I was thinking to myself, you know, if I die on that treadmill, whatever, I think I'm already dying anyway. Well, I started exercising, and, uh, you know, I didn't go mad. I just got on the treadmill, and I put it on speed number three, walked a mile, listened to some good, soothing music. And uh, let me tell you, exercise, and especially walking, reduces cortisol. And I've seen a lot of uh, videos on YouTube about this. And, you know, and then eventually I started to jog. And yes, my heart did skip beats when I jogged. I'm not going to lie. Um, but guess what? I would walk a mile at speed number three, and then I would increase to five, you know, my speed to five, and I would jog for half a mile. And my heart would skip beats sometimes. But you know what? I kept running. I didn't think about it. just kept running. And now, when I jog, my heart doesn't skip beats at all. And what I'm trying to tell you is, my cortisol level has decreased by a lot. I mean, I don't have a machine hooked up to me to tell you, but I can just tell you that I feel so much better. Like, I'm not dizzy every day. I don't have my heart skipping a beat at all anymore. Like, I was having so many palpitations a day. Um... I'm not having anxiety attacks or panic attacks. Um, you gotta get enough sleep. You gotta go to the gym. And just don't overthink things. Stop worrying about things. And I know it's hard to do, but guess what? I, I, if I could do it, you could do it. And I'm not saying my symptoms were much worse than yours, but man, 
if I was having 20 palpitations or a palpitation every 20 heartbeats for a month and I went to the gym you can go to the gym and do it yourself okay uh, you know your mind is your worst enemy if it's working against you but it's your best weapon if it's working with you stop overthinking stop stressing stop worrying go to the gym keep your mind busy and everything will work itself out. I wish you good luck and thank you for watching.